well, December 29th. Uh, this is my uh, donation bag for the their school for, uh, I think, January 3rd, the first day. The first day back. But this is uh, just up till today, December 29th. Uh, by the time the first day of school starts, I will probably have more. Now this here is a maritime archaic spare point, somewhere be between 8,000 and 3,000 BP. It's a shouldered point. That was uh, a really nice find. Now we have seed fern fossil, Ligonopterus, I believe. Oh, actually, it's already. Yeah, the seed fern fossil, Carboniferous Permian period, and it's one of the seed fern families. And here we have industrial lead, 19th century, 20th century. It's leftover lead chunks that are in amongst the, uh, the beach materials at Tin Can Beach. I don't mind getting them off the beach. It cleans up the environment. And it almost looks like nothing in the bag, but it's actually a woodland period ornament. 4500 to 1500 BP. Now that is usually worn in the hair or off the earlobe or on a garment. That's the archaic period, Neolithic period ornament. Very common, but very old. And here we have stromatolite. It's a fossil algae, fossil blue-green algae. Now both these stones, this one came off the east side of the beach. It's, uh, it hasn't, hadn't been tumbled on the beach for very long. It just surfaced recently, I would guess. Now here's one that was on the, on the beach for quite some time and tumbled. It tumbled among all the other pebbles and rocks. That is stromatolite, somewhere, say, between 2 billion and 3.5 billion years old. That was a really good find. Now next we have I'm gonna let the camera focus here. Silurian cor Silurian period corals recept receptolites and lambial phylum algae. Extremely interesting rock because it held so much in there. But and there's probably more, but my camera won't uh, my camera won't magnify it. As much as a geologist. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, yeah. These are the. Uh, they're like a horn coral. 
Lambdial phylum horn coral, these ones. That's one there, and there's one under my thumb. They're both circular, they're cone shaped. Sort of like strangely, strangely little bit, little bent ice cream cones. They're, these are horn coral. And down in this section here, the uh, there's the receptulites. It's ancient Silurian coral. You can see the eyes right there. Those eyes are, that's a, there's basically two types of coral here. And it, this rock was a really unique find. Because I found it at night using a headlamp. Now we have a woodland period stone drill used for making beads, pipe bowls, and ornaments. Basically, this was attached to a shaft and, and using a fire bow drill method. This, this was spun around and around and it was used to actually make holes in, in stone pipe bowls and to make disc beads and round beads. It was, uh, that was quite a nice find. And here we have Sigillaria fossil bark, Carboniferous Permian period. Now these, uh, I think this was about, stood about a hundred feet tall, but it wasn't a tree. If you study up on uh, Google Sigillaria fossil bark, Sigillaria fossil, you'll see exactly what this looked like when it was living, when it was living and alive in the Carboniferous period swamps. And this one is very, very special. That is a woodland period slate gorget. To find it unbroken on Tankan Beach was a miracle. Was a complete miracle. Now, uh, these gorgets were also sort of in the same design as Paleo Eskimo Ulus because the Paleo Eskimos made their Ulus almost the same fashion. Uh, basically, make an edge along here and then make holes. And then, on top of that, Put a handle and then tie the handle of the ulu tightly on to the stone blade. So um, either way, this is a very a very ancient stone tool, and I was truly blessed to discover this and rescue it from the beach. It will go to St. John the Baptist School Science Center for the kids along with everything else. Now here is, this is fossil algae, middle Silurian lime, and middle Silurian limestone, two to three billion years old or something like that. It might be 3.5, I don't know. That was, uh, th these algae are very, very, very important because 
they only grew at a certain depth. And uh, one algae would grow at a deeper depth, uh, deeper in the water. Another will grow at a much shallower at a, at a much shallower place in the ocean. So this was uh, these were from the saltwater lagoons. Wait, that two to three billion years old. I don't even know what the Earth looked like then. I have no idea, but this is quite a find. And those are the only pearls I found so far in December. I have to put them in the tape them securely in the in the clam shells because these clam pearls are going to like <laughs> they're going to roll away and go everywhere if you just handed one pearl to to a to a child and said here look at it so this way here. They can look at it securely without ever losing them. <clears throat> now, in this one, Silurian period horn coral. And I, I put this note here before fish had craniums. And that's exactly true fish hadn't even developed bones yet. Silurian horn coral, rugosa, this might be the proper name. Rugosa horn coral. And next we have, let's see, There's one, two, three, okay. The tri little triangular shaped stone there is actually number one is a woodland period fishing weight, 4500 to 1500 BP. And number two is like a punch. A long narrow punch. Now, put an edge on, put a good point on that, and it becomes an awl. And it was used as an awl to make holes and hide. Perhaps it could have been used even as a drill to make holes in wood. I don't know. And this would have had some kind of a, a uh, an antler or ivory or wood handle. It, that's number three. Number three is a shellfish processing tool, woodland period. 4,500 to 1,500 BP. And last but not least, doesn't look like much until you get a closer look. That is an effigy of the short-faced bear. The artist that made that wasn't alive <clears throat> during the woodland period. The, the short-faced bear died 11,000 years ago, died out 11,000 years ago. The, uh, the only people around during the last days of the short-faced bear 
were the Clovis Falsum people. This work of art that I discovered by the uh, uh, by the crevices and pools at the head of the stream course. This work of art is it's just fantastic. I, for one, would not want to have come into contact with any short-faced bear because, as in my uh, Part 2 video research for this artifact, I discovered that these bears, when they were walking on all fours, were five to six feet high at the shoulder. And when they stood up, they were 11 feet, 12 feet tall. It must have been, as on, as on the beach, I uh, theorized whoever, whatever uh, ancient hunter encountered that bear and actually lived to do a carving of it in stone. Well, that was one lucky hunter. One lucky hunter. And here is it's a nice little space in there for burning some kind of uh, uh, ceremonial tobacco of some kind for offering smoke for carrying out smudging or blessing ceremonies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those those uh, those teeth really stand out. It's a miracle that I was able to actually discover this. If I hadn't gone down that day that I found this, it would have been broken to it would have been broken to pieces and lost forever. But now it is going to St. John the Baptist School Science Center for the children to study. And this is literally literally eleven thousand years well ah, eleven thousand BP or older when this was carved. And it is an amazing find. Yeah, I sort of feel, I feel like I'm very close in mind to the person that made it. Because either they encountered this in a cave or on a Pleistocene plain. Or maybe they made a kill of some kind and the bear tracked down their kill site by blood sent on the wind. Because uh, these bears, they loved eating meat. So if you killed anything on the, on the Pleistocene plain, these are one of the ferocious predators that would smell that and, and come to investigate. This bear was alive when uh, when the saber tooth was alive. This is it's the most decent animal carving in stone that I ever found. It's the oldest. Well, I'm, 
I'm certainly glad that I'm not face to face with the uh, with the Clovis hunter or Falsam hunter who saw this bear because the hunter themselves would probably scare the heck out of me. But this is one fantastic piece of stone carving. And you can tell this is not a black bear. The research video discloses exactly what kind of bear had a snout like this. Only the short faced bear. So the videos related to this are also in the short short faced bear artist playlist. And just like just like the uh, <clears throat> the the hids, the hid effigies that I found, they got that bowl. And the only thing I can think of is it was there for burning some kind of ceremonial, uh, burning ceremonial tobacco of some kind, like plants, to make smoke, to offer prayers. Prayers for safekeeping for the hunter. I can't help but keep looking at it and looking at it because I just wonder what it would be, what it would have been like to actually come face to face with the short faced bear. I'm sure it must have been very terrifying because that Clovis hunter, that Clovis hunter only had a stone tipped spear and fire. Fire and stone was about the only protection I believe that they would have had against a predator like this. It would have taken a whole group of Clovis hunters with spears to fend off a predator like this short-faced bear. This is only an effigy of the head. It would have been fantastic if I had found, if I had found a carving of a whole body. All right. Well, I guess that's. In this label, the short face bear effigy. Well, I put 13,000 to 11,000 years BP, but it's a well known fact these bears were around a long time before 13,000 BP. The uh, uh, They roamed with the cave lion. The saber-toothed cat. Yeah, I think for a million years, cave bears might have been a top predator or something like that. Except for the terror bird. It was probably more fierce. But anyway, that is the finest piece of Clovis Falsam stone art that I have ever found. And the children at St. John the Baptist School Science Center are going to have the thrill of a lifetime because this, it, it, at the very least, is 11,000
thousand years old. Okay, that's enough of that video. I will put everything back and by the time the third comes around, I probably will do another video to show the other stuff that I found between now and January 3rd. I will see you online. Yeah, there you go. An 11,000 year old short-faced bear effigy.